Hello and welcome to this very special edition of the official Scottish Rugby Podcast. Today is a Rugby World Cup special as I chat with Scotland head coach Gregor Townsend and Scotland captain Stuart McAnally. First of all, congratulations for choosing the 31-man squad that will travel to Japan for the Rugby World Cup. How difficult a process was that for you? Well, it's, it's, it's been a challenge because we've had a lot of quality players available for us in training and our games. Uh, but as soon as we, we finished the, uh, the selection discussion on, on Sunday morning, we, we were really pleased with the squad we put together. Um, we, we know that there are some very good players that have missed out, but when you look right throughout the squad, we've got players that are in very good form that have taken opportunities for Scotland, whether it's just in the last few games or in the last couple of seasons. Players that work really hard for each other, uh, players that have an edge, a will to win, and that's a great combination when you, you go to a tournament like a World Cup. You've gone for a 17-14 split between the forwards and the backs. Was always the, the plan to have that split, or did any injuries change your thinking there? The, the original plan was 18-13. Uh, I think that's what Danny Wilson, our forwards coach, was pushing all summer. And we, we always knew that we'd, we'd get to the discussion of, right, will that work? 18-13 um, allows you to, to rest one forward. 17-14 uh, allows one back to be rested um, if you have to play two games in a week, which will be the case when we go between Russia and Japan. I think the, the injury to Tam Skinner got us certainly talking more about combinations and blends and what we need uh, in the back row and the second row. And a couple of backs uh, have, are just coming back from injury. So Sam Johnson had missed a chunk of games uh, and Duncan Taylor had missed a couple of games too. So in the end, we, we believed 14 backs gives us a really good cover. And with some of the forwards being able to play across uh, the back row, 17 is, is a good number too. And looking at the team overall, you've chosen 13 players who have previous Rugby World Cup experience. How important of an element is that for you? Well, it, it's important. They've been to a tournament. Um, probably less relevant given that the last tournament was in the UK. Uh, this will be new for every player. No, no one's been to a World Cup in Japan before. Some countries have played in Japan, uh, some players have played in Japan. We, we're lucky that uh, a fair uh, majority of our group, I believe, uh, were on this to, on the tour to Japan a couple of years ago. So they have experienced what living in Japan is like, what the conditions are like, uh, and playing against Japan, who are one of our opponents. I think the experience of the group is, is a bonus in general. Um, there's a lot of players that have played uh, 20, 30, 60 times for, for Scotland and that, that really helps um, nothing will phase them and the players that maybe haven't played as much for, for Scotland certainly uh, ta have taken the, the game to the opposition whenever they've had a chance so we believe we've got a confident group a group that will lead on the field uh, lead in meetings and that's really important um, because coaches can't do much to influence a game once we get closer to kick off you mentioned leading on the field and you've gone with Stuart McAnally as captain for Scotland in the, in the 2019 Rugby World Cup. We've talked before about the extensive leadership group you now have there. So what made you go with uh, Stuart as captain? Well, Stuart's done a really good job on the opportunities he's been captain for Scotland. He captained Edinburgh this year. He is a real lead-by-example player, both at training and in games. He's, he's a calming person. Um, uh, he brings others into into meetings, into, into talks, um, which I believe is really important when you see the, the other leaders that we have in the team. We have Craig Laidlaw and, and John Barkley have captained the, the side on a number of occasions. We have leaders of different parts of our game, whether that's Finn Russell in attack, Stuart Hogg in attack as well, uh, Grant Gilchrist, Johnny Gray, who, who lead the line out. So Stuart is a person, a leader that brings the best out of others and it was great to see the leadership group work so well last week in Georgia. So the whole week they, they drove the detail, drove the standards required to, to get a winning performance out in Georgia and then on the field uh, I thought they worked really well together. Just looking at the group as a whole, we have obviously have to admit players, you can't take everyone. Um, what do you say to the players then that unfortunately haven't made the cut for the World Cup? 
Well, there's not much you can say. You've got, you've got to get to the point quickly and say you've missed out on selection. Uh, these are the reasons why, um, if there are outstanding reasons. So at least the players know there's, there's, there are things that they can work on um, whenever they get the chance to, to play for Scotland again. But also those conversations end with, with a positive and an agreement to, to keep working hard because opportunities may come around very quickly. We had, what, eight players that missed out. On average, I think it's six or seven injuries um, most teams uh, get during the World Cup. So within a number of weeks, the players that have received those phone calls, one or two of them might be joining us. Uh, and we are, we are delighted with the squad, but also we are, we're very confident that anybody we call up um, are going to continue the, the quality and the standards that the, the squad have set. These players have played, uh, trained with us over the last few weeks. They've played and played well for us. Uh, so if they do get the call up, we know we'll we'll still have a very strong squad in Japan. First up, it's Ireland. Um, it's going to be a tough game there. But going past that and moving forward into the World Cup, what is the expectation you set on yourself and the team during the 2019 World Cup? Well, the, the goal and the expectation is to, to play our best rugby. And I firmly believe when we play our best rugby, we can be a match for any team in the world and beat any team in the world. So... The process is getting to play our best rugby on September the 22nd against Ireland and continuing that for as long as we can. We, we've been working hard throughout the summer to be in the best physical shape we can possibly be in. And I believe that we're the, the fittest team going into a World Cup. We've seen it with our fitness tests, with what we get back from our GPS and our tracking, and we know what other countries do. We are the fittest team going into the World Cup. Now, transferring that into a game uh, that puts pressure on opposition, that outworks opposition, uh, is sometimes not as easy as, as uh, we'd like, but we've certainly seen that um, transition come in clear over the last couple of games. Another game this weekend will help that process, um, some intense training sessions out in Nagasaki, first of all, and then getting to Yokohama, should get us in a, in a great position to take on Ireland. Yeah, I was obviously very, very pleased uh, when, he, when he asked me to be captain. It was, um, yeah, just a, a very proud day and, and, and privileged to, to be given the role and it's a role I've done a, a bit for Scotland over the last year or so and um, sort of getting more and more accustomed with it and um, yeah no I was I was happy obviously to get selected to go and then yeah to be named captain was was really good. Sure and, and if we go back to 2015 you were chosen in the squad to go to England for the Rugby World Cup then um, you were at the send-off dinner you talked about it before something didn't feel right you didn't end up going to the World Cup how did that make you feel back then? Yeah, that was quite tough to take. I was obviously over the moon in the weeks leading up to that because I'd won my first cap for Scotland and in the new position of hooker uh, since I'd moved there from the back row. So that was really great. And then, yeah, I knew something wasn't quite right at that send-off dinner. And then um, when I got the news that it was I was going to be out for a good few months, uh, I knew that my chances of going to the World Cup were over. That was that was really tough to take, especially after doing all the, the training and stuff. And you knowing I'd have to then watch it on TV rather than be there and playing, that was tough. But um, yeah, I put that behind me pretty quick, and and since then it's um, it's been it's been good. I've played a lot of rugby, especially over the last couple of years, and uh, I certainly feel more prepared to to play at the World Cup this time around than I was last time. I only had a couple of caps last time, so yeah, I'm probably in a better place now anyway. If we go back even further, you, when you were a back rower in age grade, you captained every side you played for at age grade. Um, what was some of the best advice you remember getting back then as a as a young player and, and being being a leader? I've, I guess I've learned a lot over the years. Um, when you ask the captain when you're younger, it's um, you know the, the coaches do more back then. They do more of the talking, and you generally just have to try and and play and lead by example. As as you play in more senior rugby, there's more asked of you in terms of, of on field leadership and making decisions and and the sort of the speaking aspect side of it as well. So I've had to learn that over the last few seasons. And, um, but it all, all comes down to working hard for me and, and trying to play well. And that's, I look at some of the great captains I've you know, been in teams with and, and they've always just 
been the best players and tried to play and they've played as well as they can so that's a, that's a real sort of strive for me is just to make sure I'm performing well for the team and and that's that's the most important thing and if I can and work hard and, and and try and bring others with me then that's that's leadership to me. And if we look at the squad we've assembled now there's a strong and extended leadership group within that squad what's it like for you to be able to to work with people like Finn and, and, and Hoggy and, and Greg? Yeah, it certainly makes um, makes the, the task of captaining a lot, a lot more relaxing. You know, and I've got them with me, um, Greg and, and John. Uh, to start with, those two have you know helped me so much over the last couple of weeks, and and they're they're such a vital part of the leadership group. And and we all offer different strengths, and, and they've got some really useful useful strengths that I enjoy tapping into. Uh, they're so experienced, and, and they speak so well. Um, and then yeah, you've also got the other two you touched on, Hoggy and and Finn. You know, both you know both lead by example by the way they play. They always they always seem to be the the best players for Scotland when they play. So it's good having them there. And um, yeah, I know that the sort of tactic side of it is all taken care of, especially with with Greg and Finn. Um, you know, John speaks so well about defence. Hoggy is just is just an energizer. You know, he. He just brings the best out of everyone when he plays and he trains. So, yeah, look, it, it makes my job a lot easier knowing I've got them along with me. And just finally, when you when Gregor called you or told you the news, who was the first person that you called straight after that to let them know? <laughs> uh, yeah, I told my wife. Um, she was really pleased for me. And then, yeah, I told my mum and dad as well. And they were they were chuffed for me as well, especially because they knew how, um, how hard it was the last time in 2015 not making it. And then um, sort of fast forward four years and now getting the chance to, to go as captain's very special. So, yeah, no, it's tough.